In this video, what is the best laptop for music production? I talk about specs and my recommendations. The table of contents is in the description below, but make sure you stick around till the end because I answer your most asked questions in the comments. I'll dive into the best new laptop for music production, not the mediocre ones because the mediocre ones are okay now, but lack okayness in the future. And there is nothing more annoying than a laptop that has to render out everything and you have to wait for that. To be honest, I didn't want to make new videos about this topic, but since it's becoming a trend on YouTube to upload videos with the most horrible recommendations, I felt the need to step in. Besides that I have a degree in software engineering and worked in computer stores for 10 years, I've consulted with a store before making this video. Mac or PC? Well, it may come as a shock to you, but music sounds the same on both platforms. Most major DAWs have versions for Mac and Windows and most major sound cards have versions for Mac and Windows. So it comes all down to personal preference. For me, personally, I'm not an Apple fan anymore. They sent me broke and refused to repair it. Also, I don't like their decision regarding soldering everything to your motherboard, your SSD for example. If your SSD freezes up after 4 or 5 years, your SSD is broken and not your complete motherboard. But Apple wants you to replace the whole computer with a new one by $5,000. If you are considering a second-hand laptop, definitely avoid the MacBook Pros from 2015 to 2019 because they have overheating and throttling issues, exploding issues on plain keyboard issues, external drive disconnecting issues because the USB-C ports wear out, hinge problems, blown up speakers, lack of escape, lack of SD cards, so accidental touches, the trackpad when typing. Do I need to continue? If you still want a Mac, choose the MacBook Pro 16-inch. I go into more details about the differences between Mac and PC in my special video, Mac versus PC. The link is in the description below. First of all, the CPU, the most important thing for music production. You need a quick CPU. So my recommendation, a seven series CPU of the latest generation with at least four cores especially reverbs and heavy synthesizer plugins, multiple voices and multiple instances of heavy synthesizer plugins will take up a ton of CPU power. The number of gigahertz is important, but more important for speed is the number of cores you have in your processor. A core is effectively another processor in the same shell. Oh, and one thing, those turbo boost frequencies are more a marketing term than anything else. Uh, yes, they could improve the speed of your computer, but it's only for a short amount of time, like opening a web page, for example. But you won't take advantage of that with music production because you ask a constant amount of CPU power. So in theory, yes, but in practice, no. AMD or Intel? Well, that's an excellent question. At the moment, AMD is king when it comes to speed. However, AMD makes an implementation of an Intel processor instruction set. But I have to say, the compatibility improved tremendously over the last few years. But I heard rumors of some MIDI controllers not working and some plugins not working. So I asked uh, producers specifically which plugins and which MIDI controllers are not working, but I got no real answers. So I asked you in my community tab, if you have an AMD processor, did you experience compatibility problems? Only 21 people took the poll. 33% said that they experienced issues. 67% said no issues. I also asked what doesn't work if you have problems, but I got no tangible examples in the comments. Thunderbolt on AMD is still a little bit problematic because it's Intel technology. Music producers seem to think that you always need a big amount of memory in your computer. Well, that's not always the case. If you use a lot of synthesizers, then you need a big CPU, but not a lot of memory. But when you use a lot of sample-based instruments, then you need a lot of memory, but not a lot of CPU power. Choose 8 GB when you're on a budget and can expand later. But my recommendation is 16 GB, especially when you use a lot of sample-based instruments. I made a special video about how much memory you actually need for music production. The link is in the description. 
CPUs you can't easily exchange, but memory you can. So if you're on a budget, choose a bigger CPU and add memory later. If you can't expand later, then I say be future proof, choose 32 or maybe even 64 gigabytes of memory. And again, some Apple laptops have that problem, but some other A brands have the same problem. Storage, a 7200 RPM hard drive or even better, an SSD. A 4500 RPM hard drive is too slow for music production. An SSD is quicker, what I already said, and it's also good for the battery life of your computer. I would say one terabyte. You will always run out of space sooner or later, and a lot of sample-based plugins can eat up a lot of storage. There's a widely used sample-based plugin on the market that already takes up 500 gigabytes full installation. And you need some space left for your operating system, your DAW, your samples and your projects. Working with external hard drives is a pain in the <coughs> It defeats the whole purpose of being mobile. They are easy to break, easy to get lost and where do you put them? Duct tape them to the lid of your laptop? The screen. 15 inch or preferably 17 inch. Yes, it becomes a heavy machine with 17 inch, but you need the overview. More overview means less scrolling, means a quicker workflow. A lot of plugins and DAWs don't take into account 13 inch and their respective resolutions. Then you are missing buttons on plugins, for example, uh, or you need a magnifying glass to see what's going on. Yes, I'm talking from experience. If you want to keep it small, make sure that you have an external monitor collector like uh, HDMI, for example. Then you can connect a big screen when you are producing in the studio. A side-scrolling mouse. This makes scrolling in your timeline a lot easier. Yeah, there are some laptops that have decent trackpads, but it never beats the speed of a mouse. A backlit keyboard, so you can see your keyboard in a badly lit environment. Gamer laptops could be the best laptop for music production, but they are bad for one reason. There are heavy duty graphics cards in them and you don't take advantage of that for music production. The blacklist. Well, because of the backlash I got on my blacklist in my previous videos, because people took it as a personal attack on them when I named a brand and they had one and that, ha that one notebook had no problem. Okay. You won, I don't include it. Some hints I do want to give you. Number one, some Dell XPS and Inspiron series are notorious for having latency problems with music production. These laptops are solid machines, but I would be very careful to choose one as a music producer. If you don't believe it, Google it. Hint number two, if a laptop brand relies heavily on bloatware for its machines, that should tell you something about the quality of the machine. Bloatware is sponsored software, by the way. And the most biggest laptop brands do rely heavily on bloatware. Uh, hint number three, the lower the price, the lower the quality of the components, the lower the quality of the customer service. In laptop land, there's no such thing as a good deal anymore because the margins are terribly thin. Hint number four, uh, avoid Chinese brands. We all know the technical reasons for that and a little bit the political ones, even if they're true or not. Number five, why most brands are not on the white list is for a reason, either longevity, build quality or customer service. And don't be a douche about it in the comments. Well, uh, number six is not more of a hint, but more a tip. Google the specific type number of the laptop you want to buy and see if someone experienced problems, problems with it. The items on the whitelist. First of all, HP with their Elite Book series, Asus, then Microsoft with the service laptops, although they tend to be a little bit slower, and Dell with the Alienware series. If they offer extended warranty, buy it. This is my recommendation, but what's yours? 21% said Asus, 11% said Razer, 15% said HP, and 12% said Dell. The frequently asked questions. Can I use my old laptop for music production? Do I need to buy a new one? I have Model X, does it work? 
Well, you can use your old computer, it will probably work. The computers that are made in the last 10 years are almost all suited for music production. I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you do worry, then I suggest you download a free door, install it and see if it works. I made a special video about free doors, uh, so if you're in doubt which one to choose, uh, check out the link in the description below. What do you think about Razer? Well, to be honest, I don't know the brand very well. I can't say if it's good or if it's bad. I can say that I saw a panel on ADE 2018 of the marketing firm that pointed Razer to the music producer. In other words, laptops for music production weren't a technical decision, but a marketing decision. And when I asked my friend who owns the computer store, hey, what about Razer? He said, Razer, they make gamer mice and keyboards. So I asked you in my community tab here on YouTube, would you recommend Razer to fellow music producers? 58% said yes and 42% said no. You only recommend expensive computers. I'm not rich. Well, the faster computers are better for music production because they are faster and they are more convenient to work with. And yes, faster computers tend to be more expensive. Brand X is cheaper than Y with the same specs. Is it a good deal? In other words, why choose the more expensive brand? Well, cheapness and reliability often don't go hand in hand. There is a big difference, although the proce processor may be the same, there is a big difference in the other components, uh, memory, motherboard, battery, etc, etc, etc. When something generally is more expensive, the quality of the components is generally better. Should I choose a hard drive or an SSD? Well, an SSD makes your computer faster in general, it makes your computer more snappier. And that's why I would recommend it. But to be honest, it doesn't make you make music faster. Uh, yes, your projects load faster, your DAW loads faster, your presets loads faster, so it is more convenient, but no speed in the music production process itself. 10th gen, 11th gen, gen 19th gen, 20th gen processor. What should I choose? Well, I say choose the most recent processor because or uh, it has less security issues or it's faster. Will DAW X work on my computer? I don't know, check the specs on the website of the software maker. I want an Ultrabook, is it good? Well, no. <laughs> Ultrabooks are called Ultrabooks because they're ultra slim or ultra small, but Ultrabooks have a heat distribution problem and you need good heat distribution because your processor gets really hot when you produce music and it slows down when it can't get properly rid of that heat. So you won't take optimal advantage of the power of your laptop. The best laptops for music production, the models that I recommend. When I recommend models in this video, three weeks after this video is released, the models are not in stock anymore and there are newer type and model numbers out there. So what I decided to do is make a page on my blog learnhowtoproducemusic.com, link in the description, where I can update easily the type and model numbers so you are up to date. And if you download my free ebook, link also in the description, you can read a whole chapter about the best computers and best laptops for music production.